Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample 38, a prepreg carbon panel with flanges and reinforcing structure. Here's the laminate schedule broken out for the panel and for the structure and the adhesive. Came out relatively close. So this is what I'm going to build. These are the separate pieces reinforcing Sort of omega channels. They're very light. But I needed a little mold, so with a lot of annoying noise, I machined a little aluminum one that I also needed to use for something else. Here it is. Quick polish, a little bit of flash tape on the bottom so it won't scratch up the molding table when I cook it. This is going to have two plies of plus or minus 45. 200 gram woven and in between those two plies on the top the capping of the channel will be two additional plies of 300 gram uni the little strips you can see there on the table and so I'm one of the issues I have here is that the released system is really really high slip and the material has trouble staying stuck to the surface of the mold ah, and here's a problem you can see a bit of my glove peeled off that's a really bad thing to get stuck between the plies of your laminate if you don't notice. So it's good to change your gloves when you realize there's a hole. Debulking in a little chunk of glove is bad news. It's almost as bad as backer. So here goes the first strip of uni in there. And the second. And now that second ply. If this were bigger or I were being more careful, I would have debulked the initial ply down. It would have made a bit of a difference. Here I'm just trimming off the flange so it'll, as it cures, they won't go over the edge and lock in. And because my release system is so not sticky, or not sticky it just fell right out. Uh, debulking this in would be really good. In pieces but I'm just in one debulk before I put the process material on and here it goes I'll just pull it down I end up holding it probably five or ten minutes under vacuum there so here it is with two little strips of peel ply where the surface is going to be bonded onto the panel and two pieces of non perforated fluoropolymer release film and I'm doing it in two pieces so that they don't bridge in the bottom. This is essentially a slip joint so that even though this is really stretchy, I want the pieces to be able to slide by each other and not have any unnecessary stress that might hold up the laminate to bridge the corners of the part in there. It's really important to also slip joint your process materials. So I cooked it with another little thing just on top of the aluminum panel oven that I got. So there's a little bit of porosity. I think debulking would have helped. There may also be a release issue, but it looked pretty good. And this I made the panel by placing two aluminum angles on some double stick tape to form the flanges, then covering them with some Teflon. And this, these are two plus or minus 45 strips of 200 gram woven and I'm pressing them into the corner with a block. This is a very sharp corner because I didn't put any fillet strips. Now this is a way to handle sharp corners. It's called filler strips or boot lacing or something like that. You just take a piece of uni and roll it up into a little preform essentially. And what that's going to do is fill in that sharp corner so that when you lay subsequent layers over there becomes sort of a a fillet in there and it's a good idea inside sharp corners this way you can make sharp corners which are typically a pretty bad idea with composites but this way these um, subsequent layers will have something to kind of smoothly bridge over so the first ply is um, I guess you call it 90 or 0 depending on where you're starting from and at this point I'm going to give it a quick debulk This is a used vacuum bag from another job. You can see I've pulled it in onto the Teflon so that I can make extra pleats. I'm just trying to not waste bag material. 
and for debulking it doesn't need to be perfect really it's better if it is but it doesn't need to be and after about five or ten minutes I pull it off everything looks really nice putting two additional strips of uni reinforcement on the flanges in the flange direction and in the middle there's this zero ply that because the fiber is going in the direction of the radius it can just bend right up the flanges and so here's a second one so the, the panel laminate is symmetrical about that middle ply and here are the two additional pieces of uni and then to finish it off another ply of plus or minus 45 200 gram woven that laps about 10 millimeters down onto the panel itself and this provides the structure that keeps the flange from just falling off and I'll give this all a debulk I like the green mesh for debulking it uh, works pretty well you can either use that or perforated release film with breather over it this is just really easy and it works very nicely I'm going over it with a little bit of a roller there just one way one pass to make sure those corners are nice and tight and for the process material here this peel ply is a strip comes off a roll I just used it because it had nice edges and I made sure not to end the peel ply right in the corner because sometimes a peel ply can get sucked into corners and ends up with a nasty wrinkle so is it's got a ply of that floor polymer release film which I made sure to have enough slack that it won't bridge in the corners and then did the breather in three separate pieces to cover everything including the perimeter of the flanges where there might be some gaps and things the bag could get sucked into it's just a good idea to cover anything that might be sharp with breather because even little leaks are bad and two big pleats symmetrical along the length of those flange formers and here comes the bag down a little bit of green mesh underneath the end there just to catch the vacuum fitting doesn't need to be there it's just a thing I had uh, breather would work fine so I pulled this vacuum down pretty good vacuum and put the breather on top and gave it a cook so coming back and demolding it everything looks pretty good removing that release film the peel ply I'm gonna leave on and got a wedge popped it loose and did a little cutting of some excess peel ply over the top popped it out had a look so here's the trimmed part and I've decided where I'm going to place the pieces of structure the little omega channels and laid it out with sharpie peeling the peel ply off the little channels here that leaves a nice surface I'm not going to do any sanding to prep or anything like that I'm just gonna pull the peel ply and go and so I'm gonna leave the peel ply on the panel where the parts aren't gonna go just to protect it this is a good idea this is a little silly to do it on a part this small but I'm doing it anyway just to show that it's a good idea but placed the channels in where they're gonna go and marked them off with masking tape and then masked off the panel so that when I apply the adhesive it will not go everywhere and these are some double stick tape I'm just doing this super quick and dirty the masking job is not great on something you were being careful with you'd mask off everything and there's a little issue here a mistake I made uh, which we'll talk about in a bit on the ends of each of these channels there's no flange so they don't bond on there I'm using a ProSat adhesive it's a little thin it's not really the right thing but it's toughened I'm gonna add a little carbon black to make it black just and it's still a little thin what really helps thicken something up fix a tropic modifier like cabosil or colloidal silica and a little bit of that really helps adjust the viscosity much more than a lot of other fillers do and so I mix this up and applied it in a pretty messy way to the bottoms of those flanges I didn't I should have weighed how much I had 
but the popsicle sticks I put on the double stick provide an alignment feature here so when I press them down they're not going to slide around and did a little bit of a clean up with a popsicle stick cut off square and a little bit of acetone and there is some residual release on the outsides of those little flanges and they're still shiny so that some of the excess resin will actually pop off when it's cured which is nice but put a clamp on top of it or just a big heavy chunk of aluminum and this should hold it pretty flat again if you're being fussy about something you got to control this much better but this is just for show so here it is curing with more aluminum on there to hold the ends flat you can see how messy it is in there for something nice you want to do a much better job so I came back peeled the peel ply used this little diamond cutter to cut the flanges to an even height running the router on the flat part of the panel removed some of the excess glue and all the peel ply and it looked okay so the weight of the whole thing ended up 220 grams seven and three quarter ounces and it feels pretty light when you hold it so here's the part of the mistake when I made this I made it a foot long because I had not imagined I was going to use it with these channels so you the channels I made were longer than they needed to be. What I could have done had I been clever is to make this aluminum mold shorter by the thickness of the laminate plus a little of, of the area, the length in between the flanges and then mold it in more laminate around the end of the aluminum mold like shown here in red so that the laminate would bond, there would be room to bond it onto the flanges and that would have been, that's what you should do. Um, because leaving them open like that is a bad idea. So the bottom turned out really nice. The uni looks good. That Teflon leaves a beautiful surface. You can see the sharp corners. There's no voids or air or anything in there. And the woven plus or minus 45 wrapping around. The corner, you can see all that extra thickness from the filler strips. It's not that neat. There's some shiny glue some ugliness there uh, for something you'd want to be careful to clean up better mask off better it's pretty stiff surprisingly stiff compared to how light it is and how this one millimeter skin really doesn't feel like much um, where it's unconstrained at the ends you can bend it easily but in the middle of the panel between the stringers there it's very stiff and the real benefit to something like this compared to core is that it doesn't have all the core problems. It doesn't have delamination issues. It doesn't have core bonding issues. You don't have to worry about all of that you know, fuss that comes with fitting core, bending core, and all of the, the shear issues that you have with core uh, in terms of engineering. And here I'm showing the end where I should have put flanges. It did chip off in one place. You could feel it there's just nothing holding it on except a butt joint so it should have had these flanges or if not to have had continuous uni would carry on to what would be the next panel beyond if you were building something that had um, multiple multiple pieces fit together and instead of a flange that was sort of a, a frame or a piece of ring structure but overall it, it is interesting it's a neat to see the alternative decor and it was fun to make. So thank you for checking it out. Check out ExploreComposites.com for an awful lot more stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.